Welcome. Uh, thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, this is the first uh, big product announcement that we have at our new campus, so we're excited to have you guys all with us. Uh, our mission is to make the world more open and connected. And the way that we do this is by giving people tools so that they can map out the stories of their lives and all of their connections. And we believe in this concept that we call the social graph. It's the sum of all of these different connections in the world. And we believe that if we give people the tools to map out this graph, then that map that people build can be the basis for building a lot of different kinds of services for connecting. Now, there are two primary kinds of services for connecting. There are ones that help you stay connected with people and things that you're already connected to, and there are ones that help you discover and make new connections. Most people think about Facebook primarily as the former, um, a service that helps people stay connected with people who they already know. Uh, but going back to, to the beginning of Facebook, way before Newsfeed, uh, the way that people used Facebook was actually to browse around and discover lots of new things um, in their network. So today we're going to take a little trip back to our roots and we're going to discuss a service um, that helps people use the social graph to discover and make new connections. So one way that we think about Facebook is as if it's this big community that's producing this living database of all of this content and the stories of people's lives. And just like any database, um, you should be able to query it. And we kind of have this, we imagine that every screen of the Facebook product is the result of some query that someone is doing to learn something about their network and the people around them. So there are a few major use cases, and we call these the pillars of the Facebook product ecosystem. So the first query that is really common that a lot of people want to do um, is they want to know what's going on with the people around them, what's going on in the world. And that's newsfeed, right? I mean, newsfeed, the content on this page um, is really the answer to the query, what is going on in, in, with the world around you. Another really common query that people want to do is, um, who is this person? Uh, tell me their story. W tell me something about them. And, um, and that's timeline. So those are the first two pillars of the Facebook product ecosystem. And today we're going to talk about the third. So what is the third pillar? Um, is it you know, things that my friends like? Well, that's pretty interesting, could be useful. Um, is it photos of my friends doing something? It's pretty good, too. Um, what about places that my friends have been to or places that my friends like? Well, that's pretty neat, too. Uh, but the reality is, is that what's more interesting than any of these things individually is giving people the power and giving people the tools to take any cut of the graph that they want and make any query that they want. And um, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's the third pillar of the Facebook product ecosystem, and we're calling it graph search. All right. So what is graph search? <laughs> um, graph search is not web search, um, is the, the first thing that I want to start off with. We're, we're not indexing the, the web here. We're indexing um, our map of the graph. And the graph is really big, and it's constantly changing. There are more than a billion people in this map of the graph, with almost a million new ones every day. There are um, more than 200 billion photos with you know, hundreds of millions of new ones every day. And there are more than a trillion connections in, in total in, in this map of the graph with billions and billions of new ones every day. And not only are there a trillion connections or more, but there are lots of different kinds of connections in the graph. There are friend connections and follow connections and group connections and event connections and photo tags and locations and likes and comments and all these different types of connections. And what this all basically adds up to is that um, indexing all this content and making it so that you can retrieve it instantaneously is a really hard technical problem that we've been working on for a long time to, to get to this point. But it actually gets a little bit harder than this because um, this, the search that we wanted to build is privacy aware. Right? So every piece of content on Facebook has a different audience um, that, that can see it. And this is both one of the most powerful things about graph search um, in addition to one of the things that made it the most difficult and, and challenging to build. So it's really powerful because on Facebook, most of the things that people share with you aren't public. And um, similarly in the world, most of the interesting content that you, that you um, have access to isn't public. So you want a search tool that can help you get access to things that people have just shared with you. 
But of course, this is really challenging because now when you do these queries, um, if, if a result has thousands of results, we need to compute for each of those thousand elements um, whether you can see them before we show them to you. And um, that's a lot of work. And just to give you a sense of how much work that is even before we launched such an intensive product is graph search. Um, already today across all of our data centers and our um, fleet of CPUs, about 10% of our CPU capacity um, is spent computing privacy checks um, today uh, across all of Facebook. And um, that just gives you a sense of how seriously we take um, giving people the ability to share anything they want with any audience out there. Um, this is infrastructure that we've been building up for years. Um, it's something that no other company has, and it's the reason why we're able to build a product like this. Now, let's talk more about the difference between web search and graph search. So web search and graph search are really, really different. Um, we think web search is great. Uh, we think graph search is great and really different too. Um, and we just want to emphasize today how different they are as, as products. So if you do a web search for, say, hip hop, I mean, it'll show you lots of links that might have answers to different questions that you have. What is hip hop? Who are hip hop artists? What are resources about hip hop? And um, links that might have answers to many other questions that you might have about hip hop. In, in general, web search is designed to take any open-ended query and return to you links that may have answers to the question that you might be trying to ask. Now, graph search is very different. Graph search is designed to take a precise query and return to you the answer, uh, not links to other places where you might get the answer. So for example, you need to be able to easily ask a query like, um, who are my friends who live in San Francisco? And it just needs to return to you the answer immediately and quickly. So, you know, in, in doing this, in addition to a big technical problem, one of the big design problems that we had to solve was um, how can we make it so that people can ask these questions that, that can be incredibly precise in a very natural and intuitive way. So um, we spent a long time working on this, and, and we came up with an interface that, that we think is unique. Um, how does graph search work? And the answer that we came to is um, filters. <laughs> No, that's my joke for you today. Um, <laughs> no. Um, what's up? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, most other structured search um, products that are out there um, rely heavily on filters. But we quickly realized early in this product uh, development that this was not going to scale to all the different types of connections that we want to support. And you can see this just up here. I mean, this is some of the different types of connections that we support. Um, and we obviously want to do way more over time. Um, so we came up with something that we thought was a lot more natural. And you know, a, a while back, um, Lars Rasmussen and, and Tom Stocky uh, came to me, and um, Lars had this idea. And, and the, the, the basic idea was, you know, if every screen of the Facebook product, um, you have the title at the top, and you have content that matches, uh, that basically is what the title says, then why shouldn't you just be able to go ahead and edit the title of, this, of the page, the screen, and in doing so, um, edit the content that's on the screen dynamically. It would be like this dynamic database where the title is the query and the page is the result of the query. And you know, my immediate reaction is, you know, that's really awesome, but unfortunately it's impossible, right? I mean, in order to do that, um, we need to be able to understand natural language so that way you could um, edit the title and we'd know what you were talking about. Um, and, um, you know, so I told them that I thought that this couldn't be done. Now, as any good Facebook team will do, they took this as a challenge. And um, in addition to their work indexing the more than a trillion connections in the graph, in parallel they were building this up. And then a few uh, months later, they had a version that was basically working. And um, here's what it looks like.
All right, so this is where I want to emphasize how early we are in the development of graph search. So the graph is really big, and um, there's a lot of content that we want to index. But for this first beta version of graph search, um, we focused primarily on four different use cases. Um, people, photos, places, and interests. And there's a lot more, but you know these, these cases are really useful. And we built something that we're really proud of and that we're, we're ready to show today. So, what can you do with graph search? Um, let's start with a people query. So um, a few months ago, you know, Game of Thrones was, was coming on, and, um, and I, I wanted to invite some people over who, who wanted to watch it. But I didn't know which of my friends who lived around me liked Game of Thrones. So I just put a query into graph search, friends uh, near Palo Alto like Game of Thrones. And here's what I got. And you can see the results are ordered. Uh, so these are exactly the people who, who match that, that query. But they're also sorted and, and ranked by um, people who I care the most about. So at the top, that's my sister, and that's her husband. And um, then a lot of the rest of folks are sorted by um, how many mutual friends you have with the person or other signals that, that are in the Facebook system for how much you, you care about these different folks. So, and this was great. I mean, I just um, I, I clicked on a bunch of them, invited them over, and we had a small Dothraki party. So um, <laughs> um, uh, let's look at photos. So, a few uh, months ago, Priscilla and I were trying to figure out what photo we wanted to use on our holiday greeting card. So I figured this is a great use case for, for graph search. Let's just throw in there um, photos of me and Priscilla. And all these photos came up. And the best ones are at the top, so the ones that have the most likes and, and comments and had the most engagement on Facebook by the people who I care the most about. And there are hundreds of photos here, and we just spent a long time looking through this. It's just such a warm and engaging experience. Um, it's, it, it was really a lot of fun. And you can't do this anywhere else. Um, let's look at a places query. So one of the things that, that Priscilla and I like to do on the weekends is go find new places to, to, to go to restaurants. And you know what better way is there to do that than to see what places your friends have been to and what they've liked. So um, you know, I put in this query and um, you know, looking for restaurants nearby that, that my friends have been to. And um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is you can see right here um, which friends have been to each of the restaurants, um, which ones have liked it and also information about the restaurant and, um, and a rating, right? Because you, it shouldn't be a question between do you want social signal or information and ratings about a place. Um, you should be able to get it all in one place, and, and you can with this. And we found an interesting place, and we went, and, and it was a good time. So anyhow, you, you get the point on, on these few queries. But in order to really get the power of graph search, you have to see it for yourself um, and, and take a look at the live product. So I'd like to invite Tom Stocky and Lars Rasmussen up here to show us some more use cases. Guys? Thanks, Mark. Um, so like Mark said, there's four main types of searches that Graph Search can do. People, photos, interests, and places. So we're going to walk through each one of those in turn um, and show you some of the things you can do here. So to start out with, um, can we switch to my computer? It's this one. <laughs> it is. So I wanted to show you the slide with our names on it. <laughs> That looks about right. Yes, all right. So the first thing, uh, yeah, all right, demo's working. So th the first thing I'll show you is the, is the search box at the top. So when I click that, what you'll see is you get suggestions that come down that are the types of searches that Graph Search understands. So you see my friends, photos of my friends, restaurants nearby, games my friends play, et cetera. Or I can just, just start typing. So I'm going to start typing with uh, friends who. And again, what you'll see is the suggestions I'm getting are the, th are the sorts of things that Graph Search understands. Friends who work at a particular place or who live in a particular city, et cetera. And the thing to emphasize here is, like, like Mark was saying, this isn't keyword search. So I'm not typing a set of keywords, hitting enter, and then getting the, th the set of things that most closely matches those keywords. Graph Search is structured. And so it understands searches made up of these, of these uh, simple phrases. And as I'm typing, it'll then suggest those to me, and I can pick the one I want. So in this case, let's say I'm planning some sort of you know, epic movie night. So I'll do friends who like Star Wars and Harry Potter. 
And so I get back the set of people, the set of my friends, 16 in this case, who like Star Wars and Harry Potter. And I want to mention a few things on this page. So the first thing is, is the top. So the search box is where I typed this query, but it also serves as a sort of title for the page. And so this was like what Mark was saying is, you kind of type in the title that you want for your view of the content that's on Facebook, and then the content fills in. So there's a, there's a page called Newsfeed, and there's a page, if I want to know about Lars Rasmussen, his timeline, it's called Lars Rasmussen. And this page, if Facebook had created it, would be called My Friends Who Like Star Wars and Harry Potter. The other thing to mention is that this isn't just about getting the set of, of people who like Star Wars and Harry Potter. I can actually learn a little bit more about the individuals here. So you can see that Umber likes Harry Potter and Star Wars and also Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And you can see like Sanja also likes Harry Potter and Hitchhiker's Guide. And, and there's also 17 other movies. So if I click on this, what I'm not saying is this is the set of movies that Sanja likes. And so I can just scroll through these and learn, OK, Home Alone's a little bit unexpected. <laughs> uh, but Three Idiots is awesome. I, I recommend that one. But let me go back. And the other thing to mention about these results is that these are entirely unique to me. So if anyone else does this, uh, does this search, look at a different set of results. Even if Lars and I had the exact same set of friends, we would still get different results because, in part, they're ordered by how close of a connection I have to each one of these individuals. Um, OK, so, but like Mark said, this isn't just about current connections. It's not just about my friends. It's about making new connections and exploring other connections out there. So let's try. Um, OK, so like a common, a common case is that you meet someone uh, in real life, and you want to actually become friends with them on Facebook. So let's say I was at one of Lars's parties, and I met someone named Chris. And so I can do people named Chris who are friends of Lars. And let's say I remember that he went to Stanford. So I'll do and went to Stanford. And so I now get this. OK, so it's, in this case, it's one person. I get the Chris that is friends with Lars and who went to Stanford. And so this is probably the Chris I want. Um, and I want to mention one other thing. So you may have seen these tools over on the right side where it says refine this search. So this is another way that you can, you can refine your search by going, you know, you can choose like a gender or a relationship, employer, et cetera. This, in this case, I wouldn't want to refine it further because it's just one person. Um, but the, the reason to mention this is because we realized that with this search box where you can just kind of type anything you want in there and get back results, we knew that people would have trouble understanding kind of what, what you can and can't search for. So we created these tools on the right to give a sense for the breadth of what's possible. And whatever you type in the search box gets reflected over in the tools. So in this case, because I did people named Chris, you'll see in the name field it says Chris. Because I did friends of Lars, under friendship it says friends of Lars, and I could choose a different one here, close friends or whatever. And under former school it says Stanford, and I could choose something else. And so let's say actually this wasn't the Chris I was looking for. He didn't go to Stanford, he actually went to Olin. So I'll change Stanford to Olin, and now I get a different Chris. And this is the Chris I wanted, Chris Mara. And, and the, in the same way that when, whatever I type in the search box gets reflected in the tools, when I change this to Olin here, it also changed up here in the search box. And so this way, it, we're kind of helping users understand what you can do in both places. Another thing graph search can be useful for is, is for dating. So this is relevant to my own life. I actually, my, my wife's cousin recently moved here. Um, her name's Serena. She moved here from, from India. And she's single. And so like everyone else, I love to meddle in my family's lives. So <laughs> Let's say I'm going to use graph search to find someone to set her up with. So I'll do friends of friends. For dating queries, friends of friends tends to be a good place to start. And I'll just do who are single men. And now I get the set of single men who are friends with people I'm friends with. But this should be more specific. So I'll switch to San Francisco. So now I have friends of friends who are single men. And I'm guessing this is a photo of his daughter. But friends of friends who are single men <laughs> and live in San Francisco. Um, but since, since Serena's from India, I'll add that too. So I'll put and who are from India. And so now I'm getting the set of, of single men who are friends with my friends who live in San Francisco and are from India. And what's neat is that in each case, it shows me the mutual friends. So in this case, both Tudor and Greg are friends with him. So those would be the people I could go to to find out more information about him and see if he you know, meets the bar for getting set up with Serena. <laughs> um, and the other thing, I guess the other thing to mention, too, is that there are probably a lot more single men who live in San Francisco and are from India and are, who are probably even friends with my friends. But the, the, the people I'm seeing here are the ones who have set all of those fields in their profile. So they've, they've set a current city and said that it's San Francisco. 
They've set a, a hometown and said that it's, it's someplace in India, and that they've set the privacy of those things such that I can see them. And so most of these, as you can see, most of these people aren't my friends. So if any of them, let's say if they had set their current city to friends only, or if they had set their hometown to friends only, they wouldn't show up here. I'm only able to search for what I can already see on Facebook. So another thing that graph search can be is a pretty powerful recruiting tool. So let me, let me do a recruiting query. Let's say I'm, I'm looking to recruit um, some people to work at Facebook. Similar to friends of friends being a good place to start with dating, friends of current employees tends to be a good place to start um, for recruiting. So let's say I want to recruit people from NASA, because you, know, you can never have too many rocket scientists. Um, and so NASA Ames is right down the street, so I'll do NASA Ames employees who are friends of Facebook employees. And so again, what I get back is the set of people who have listed in their profile that they work at NASA Ames and who are friends of people who have put in their profile that they work at Facebook. And, and similarly, what's nice is that for each one, I can see who are the Facebook employees that are friends with these people. And so in this case, I see these two guys who I could then reach out to and say, okay, well, tell me more about this person. And if I wanted to reach out and recruit him, these would probably be the right people to reach out to him because they're friends with him. So let me do something a little more broad. So let's say one of the things um, I spend a lot of time doing is recruiting product managers. So let's say I wanted to find um, more product managers to work at Facebook. One thing that a lot of great product managers have done before is start a company, so they've founded something before. So I'll do people who have been product managers and who have been founders. And so now what I'm seeing is this is a set of people who have put in their profile that they founded a company and put in their profile at some point that they were uh, a product manager. And it's cool because, I mean, George is already a product manager here at Facebook. So is Matt, so is Chris. So clearly this is a query I might want to come back and spend more time with. So great, so that's a sense for kind of what you can do around people. I'm going to hand off to Lars, who's going to tell you about photos. All right, thanks, Tom. Good morning, everyone. We switched to my computer. Yeah, so I get to show you how you can use graph search to find the best photos on Facebook here. So, you know, if you, if you navigate to someone's timeline, you can click the Photos tab and quickly see a set of photos of that person. You can do that on graph search as well. Mark already showed you how easy it is to find photos of two people, like Mark and his wife Priscilla. But what about if you want to find all the best photos of your friends? It's as easy as this. Photos of my friends. <coughs> Excuse me, there. And now you'll see we pick out, like Mark explained before, we pick out all of the best photos based on likes, based on comments, and so on. And it's really an awesome experience. For graph search, this is a walk in the park. This is one of the simplest things that it does, but I don't think this has ever been available before on Facebook. Now, I know that my friends like traveling, so let's check out if any of them took any photos in, say, Paris. There. Photos of my friends taken in Paris, France. So it's the same group of people, the same group, same set of photos, but this time we filter down to things that they took in Paris. This is actually one of my favorite here. I don't know exactly how he did that, <laughs> but I, I definitely, definitely want to go there. Or how about a lot of my friends like hiking? So let's try and see photos in Yosemite Park. Or actually, let's just try national parks in general. National parks. So photos of my friends taken in national parks. There we go. Now you'll see I have friends of this is Machu Picchu, I think, and Yosemite is indeed in there. You can see my friends are really outdoorsy. This is really a fantastic experience. This is probably my favorite right here. This is Carrie Lee. She's actually the engineer who's been on the project the longest. She's awesome. I think she's recruiting for the team right here. <laughs> Hopefully a mascot or something. So a really cool thing that happened when we launched Timeline a while back is that my friends started uploading photos of themselves from the past, of their friends from the past. And so this is probably one of my favorite queries right here. If I do photos of my friends before 1990, there we go. Suddenly, everyone is a child again. <laughs> this I can just look at for hours. I think this is probably my favorite right here. This is Cheryl. You can just see, you can, I know, you can see the leadership. <laughs> This is your first board meeting, right? <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna just like this. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. So, in fact, when when you guys get to try this out a little later, I think the first thing I recommend that you do is photos I like. So, again, a super simple query for graph search. Like I used Facebook for years, and every day I probably like one or two, three more photos. 
I have never been able to see all of the photos I like just in one place. And this is how easy it is. And you can see these photos are just, oh, there is Cheryl. These photos are just great. Always a lot of babies. Oh, here, speaking of babies, here is uh, Tom giving <laughs> Carly Rae Jepsen baby fever when she was <laughs> the other way. <laughs> so I suspect that people are overwhelmingly going to use this to find photos that people they like, care about. But there are actually also other photos that you can find on Facebook here. Let me show you this. I really like photos of Berlin, Germany in 1989, the year the wall came down like this. And so it turns out that people have actually shared some really cool photos of that year. And you'll see none of these are from my friends, I think, but if you, if you look here, if you hover over this icon here, you can see the audience that the uploader chose for that photo. And these are all, I think, all public photos. Maybe there is one or two in there by my friends, but these are all public photos. And I want to just, before I hand it back to Tom, I want to just, uh, mention one more time that on graph search, you can only search for the content that people have shared with you. And this is a very important point, and I just want to illustrate that really quickly with my last query here, photos of Lauren Cheng. He's one of the product managers on the team, and you can see this awesome photo here. <laughs> just another day in the house of Cheng. <laughs> You'll see here that Lauren chose, I don't know why, to share this only with his friends. And so the reason I can see this photo in graph search is that Lauren and I are friends. And I want to just show you this. If I, if I quickly unfriend Lauren, Aww. just for the demo, of course. Remove from friends there. And now if I refresh and I reissue the search, you'll see that that awesome photo is no longer there. Okay, so you can only, in graph search, you can only see the content that you could already see on Facebook before. Tom, back to you. <laughs> Thanks. So we've talked about people, we've talked about photos. Next up is interests. Um, so there's already ways for people to, to fill out their timelines and say what their favorite books are, what their favorite movies are, TV shows, sports teams, all that stuff. Um, but so far, the way to find that stuff out is you have to kind of go to everyone's timeline and look at it. What's cool about Graph Search is it brings this all together in one place. So I can just do movies, my friends, like. And this is, for Graph Search, this is a super simple query. But now I'm seeing all of the friends that my movies, all, all the friends, all the movies that my friends have liked. And again, just like before, you can find out a little bit more about the things in the set. So here in The Dark Knight Rises, you can see it says people also like, so this is people who have liked The Dark Knight Rises also like Batman, The Dark Knight, Transformers, and other movies. And I could click that to see, okay, well, what are the movies liked by people who like The Dark Knight Rises? But it's also just, I mean, for someone like me who just spends hours kind of blankly staring at my Netflix queue, this is, this is the solution to that. I can now come here and just see all these great movies through the lens of my friends and find something that I haven't seen before and then, you know, add it to the queue. So instead of movies, let's do TV shows. And now I'm seeing the TV shows that my friends liked. And I mentioned these tools on the right before, the, the refine the search. There's also um, a section called extend the search. And so here you can see that it suggests, it suggests searches that are kind of related but slightly different from what you're looking at now. And the thing that I think is really neat about this one is, is the videos from these pages. So I'll click that. And now what I'm seeing is videos by TV shows that my friends like. And this is, con this is pretty amazing because this is like, if I wanted to find a new show to watch, like the best way to find out about a TV show is to watch a video clip from it. So I, I'm seeing a video clip from Mad Men, 30 Rock, Modern Family, Archer, The Office, Seinfeld. I mean, if I wanted to find another TV show to watch, this is, is through the filter of my friends, and I can also just quickly watch um, clips about that. But as we've been saying, this isn't just about current connections. It's also about exploring new connections. So instead of doing stuff about my friends, let's do um, TV shows, liked by software engineers. So Big Bang Theory tops the list. That's not too surprising. <laughs> and, and now I can just scroll through and see these are the, the TV shows that software engineers like. And it's sometimes fun to compare this with other things. So let's say instead of software engineers, let's do doctors. And now I get a completely different set. <laughs> and I was, I was pretty surprised, too, that like, they tend to like to watch actor renditions of themselves on TV. <laughs> and Tom and Jerry. Like that, <laughs> it's kind of surprising and a little bit scary. 
All right, so let's, um, let's do something else. Do, let's do music liked by people who like Mitt Romney. And now Johnny Cash, Metallica, Floyd. You can just kind of scroll through the Beatles. You can see all the music that people who like Mitt Romney like. And of course, the obvious comparison is to say, okay, well, let's see liked by people who like Obama. And now I get a completely different set of, of music. Okay, they have the Beatles in common, so there is some common ground there. But, but this is the sort of thing where you can just kind of click around on these things forever and just explore the, the community and the world around you. Um, I'll do one last one just that's completely different, which is languages my friends speak. Oh, I made a mistake here. So not my languages but the languages that my friends speak. And so now, just this is, there's a, a field inside your timeline where you can list the languages you speak. This is taking all of the ones from my friends and putting them in, in one place. And so because I have a lot of software engineer friends, PHP and Python are showing up there. <laughs> there's Spanglish. This is all good stuff. And if I, if I wanted to find the set of people, let's say I needed something translated from French, I could, could then go and say, okay, who are just the friends who speak French? And now I have the set of my 18 friends who speak French. So this gives you a sense for some of the things you can do around <coughs> interests. I'll hand back to Lars, who's going to talk about places. Thank you again. Yeah, so you've seen people, photos, interest, and the last area we want to show you today is places. But before I show you how to use graph search for places, I want to just make sure you understand that all of the existing search functionality on Facebook is, of course, still there. So on Facebook today, there is a search box up on top. You can search for your friends by name. You can search for new people by name. You can search for pages on Facebook, places, groups, apps, all of these things. That stuff is still there. I'll show you real quickly. If I want to navigate to Mark's timeline, I can just type in his name here and hit enter. And then I'm right on his timeline, just like before. Or I was in, uh, I was in Athens in Greece for New Year's, and I had this incredible meal at a restaurant called Funky Gourmet. And if I want to go like its page, I can just type in its name, go to its timeline, just like before, none of that has changed. Graph search is added on top of that. So places and graph search. So a few months ago, I had this terrible toothache. And I'm a little bit new to the area, so I needed to find a new dentist. And this, of course, is a place where I want, I want to go to somewhere my friends would recommend. So I type in dentists liked by my friends. And it was actually funny when I, when I did this, the second answer here is actually Mark's dad, <laughs> which of course, of course I would go to Mark's dad, except he's in New York right now. And so, and so but this other one here, uh, Dr. Pai, uh, 17 of my friends like her, so that's clearly a good candidate. I could click here like Tom was showing you and go straight to see the actual set of friends who have liked Dr. Pai. And I happen to know Chris here, he's like me, hates pain. Yeah, so this is <laughs> clearly the right dentist. I went there, it didn't hurt at all. It was a pretty good experience. And so <clears throat> now that my teeth are fixed, let's try and look for a place to eat in San Francisco, restaurants in San Francisco, California. And so here we show there's, of course, uh, lots of restaurants in California. We show so what's, what's popular globally with a, with a skew towards what my friends like. But let's try and find something more specific. So I'm lucky I have a lot of friends from India. So suppose I am looking for a spicy meal tonight. I could type in restaurants liked by my Indian friends, like this. And it suggests, like by my friends from India, and now you'll see that they're picking out, there's some Indian restaurants in here, Thai places, Mexican places. This is definitely the place I want to go tonight. And in fact, if I wanted specifically an Indian restaurant, like by my friends from India, I can ask for that as well. I could type it into the box up there, or I can go like Tom was showing before and use the tools on the right, just click Indian here for category, and now I've narrowed it down just to Indian restaurants liked by my friends from India. This top one here, Dosa, I've actually been there. It's a really nice place. But you can see I won't get tired of looking at Indian places for a while. And so this is how you can use graph search to find restaurants based on what your friends like. But it doesn't have to be limited to your friends. So let's just go back here a step to restaurants in San Francisco. And then instead of liked by my friends from India, I'm going to look at, we're now in the pro tip section of the demo here. So there's this, there's this cooking school called the Culinary Institute of America that churn out these top chefs. And I want to look at what restaurants people who've graduated from there tend to go to. So I'll type in like by Culinary <coughs> Institute 
Let's see, Culinary Institute of America graduates. There, it's a bit of a mouthful, but I am that hungry. And so here you'll see now, these are actually some of the top restaurants in San Francisco at all different price ranges, right? So there's a diner in here that people who are top chefs like, that's definitely the diner you'd want to go to if you're in that kind of mood. Another example, uh, let's say I'm going to Dublin to visit our colleagues there, and of course we want a beer after work. And if I just look for bars in Dublin, bars in Dublin, uh, as far as I know, there are quite a lot of those in Dublin, and so of course I want to pick out the ones that the locals like. And so I can type bars in Dublin, Ireland, liked by people who live in Dublin, Ireland. If I can spell it, there we go. There, and now we know where Lars is going to go for beer after work. <coughs> Lily's Bordello, which is in fact a bar, I swear. <laughs> So you can search for restaurants, bars, dentists, all kinds of places. You can search for tourist uh, attractions. You can search for museums. You can search for cities or even countries. If you want to go on my next vacation, I'll look for countries my friends have visited like this. And here you will see a list of all of the countries my friends have been to. We've talked about Ireland before. And of course, I can just go and click here and see exactly which of my friends have been there. And maybe I'll ask them, hey, Mark. I'll ask them whether that bordello place is, in fact, the right spot, OK? <laughs> so that's places. Back to Tom. Cool. So we talked about the four main types of searches that you can do um, with graph search. People, places, photos, interests. We did them in a different order, but those are the four. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention is some of the privacy tools we have. So we realize that people are going to care about you know, what shows up about them in search. Um, and we actually have some great tools to answer just that question. So toward the end of the year, last year, we, um, we launched these new privacy shortcuts. So they're on the upper right if you click this lock uh, at the top right of, of, the, of the bar. And we summarized um, a lot of the, the key privacy settings and tools into the three questions that people tend to care about. And so the one I'm going to go to is who can see my stuff. And one of the links there is to the activity log. So I'll go to my activity log. And you can see this is you can see that it, this shows the activity that I've, I've done on Facebook, and it brings it together all in one place. So things I've liked, things I've posted, things I've commented on. You can see that because we just like this photo uh, of Cheryl, that it's right at the top. On the left, there's these uh, filters for where I can just see my posts or just see posts that I'm tagged in. I'm going to click on the Photos one. So now what I'm seeing is this is the set of photos that I've uploaded or that's been tagged of me. And it brings it together all in one view. Um, and then there's some controls at the top where I can say, OK, I just want to see the public photos that I've uploaded, or the public photos of me, or just the ones that are shared with friends of friends or friends. Or I want to say, OK, I just want to see the photos that I've hidden from my timeline. And so that's what I'm going to choose. And so now I can see, in one place, the three photos that I've hidden from timeline. <laughs> it's unclear why anyone would hide this photo. <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's say, for whatever reason, I found these, these photos embarrassing, and so I, I hid them from my timeline. What I can now do is, let's say I, I, you know, I don't want them to appear in search either. And so I actually, you know, I'd love to have them removed from Facebook altogether. I didn't post these photos. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll check the three here, and three boxes here. I'll click Report Remove Tags. And then it asks me, OK, do you want these photos untagged, or would you, would you rather have them removed? I'd rather have them taken down, so I'll choose that. And why is this? It's because I find them embarrassing. That's a lie. I don't find them embarrassing. But let's say I did. All right, and so now what it's showing me is this is a message that it's sending to the person who uploaded these photos. And it's saying, hey, you know, I'm a little embarrassed by these. It would be great if you could take them down. And when I click Send, two things happen. One is it untags me from those photos. And then the second thing is it sends that person a message and says, hey, would you please take these down? So this is just a, just a, a touch of some of the, the privacy tools we have. Um, and with that, we'll hand it back to Mark. All right, thanks, guys. So this is just some really neat stuff. Um, th this is one of the coolest things that I think that we've done in a while. And I, I just want to emphasize how early we are in this, though. Just because the, most of the demo queries that we tried to do worked, um, this, is, this is a beta product. Um, and for the first version, we focused on a few use cases that we think are going to be really good, and we're proud of where we are, and we're ready to start showing them to people. But you know, even as an early product, Graph search is a completely new way 
for people to get information on Facebook. And any time we roll out uh, a completely new way for people to um, see information like this, um, people often ask, you know, e even if the only information that you can search for is, is, are things that people could already see on Facebook, people ask, well, which of my um, pieces of content are people going to be able to see when they search? And you know, we think that this is just a really important question that a lot of people on, on Facebook are going to have. And, and we take this really seriously. So as Tom mentioned right before um, I, I got up here, we built a few tools. So that way now um, you can see all of the photos that are going to be tagged of you that people are going to be able to see in search, all of your information that people are going to be able to see in search. Um, and you can bulk untag things for the first time. And you can bulk set privacy settings. But in addition to just building these tools, you know, it's not enough just to build the tools. We need to get them in front of people so that way people actually see them before, we, uh, before everyone in the world has graph search. So what we're going to do is we're going to put um, a, an encouragement on the home screen of, of everyone's account like this. So that way um, everyone has the chance to go look through these tools and see what people are going to be able to find about them in graph search. And we're going to do this before graph search is very widely rolled out starting soon um, so that way people have a chance to use these tools. So just once again, here's a screenshot of of um, the tool, and you can see the check marks. You can bulk untag or bulk um, get rid of things however you want. Now, before we um, end today and go to Q&A, there's, uh, there's one more thing that I, that I want to show you. So even in its early stage, uh, graph search can help you find a lot of different types of content on Facebook. But when we can't find what you're looking for, we have a partnership with Bing so that we can also show you some world-class search results in the event that um, there, there isn't something in the graph that matches your query. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's say I search for um, Rihanna's newest album, right, which is some content that isn't yet mapped out in the graph. Um, rather than not being able to show anything, we figure you know, it's much better to, to have web search results here and a good web search engine. So um, those are, are web search suggestions. And if you would enter, here's what this looks like. So this is, um, uh, this is Bing powered web search um, on, on Facebook. Um, and let's look at another example. Um, here's weather. If you search for weather in Menlo Park, you see this. Again, um, weather in Menlo Park, it's not something that we have indexed um, in the graph yet. Uh, so, so working with, um, with Bing is, is a really good way to do this. Now, with graph search, you get this really powerful tool to be able to make all these different queries and find all this content um, in, in the graph. And you also get a world-class search engine at the same time. Now, I don't necessarily think that a lot of people are going to start coming to Facebook to do web searches because of this. That isn't the intent. But in the event that um, we can't find what you're looking for, it's really nice to have this. Um, so that way we can show you as good of content as you're going to be able to find in, in any other search engine. So, or, uh, or Bing, which we think is a very good search engine. So um, now, again, so graph search is a really big project. Um, and it's going to take years and years to to index all the whole map of, um, of the graph and, and everything that's out there. But we're, we're really excited about these cases that we have today. We focus today on people, photos, places, and interests. And you know, there's more content that we haven't gotten to yet than what we have. So in the future, there are some very obvious things that we want to get to. Mobile, um, you know, the only reason why we didn't do mobile first is because for the last year, uh, most of our best mobile engineers have been rewriting our core apps. Um, all languages, obviously, we want to make this available to everyone in the world. We're starting off with English because we speak English. About 40% uh, of, of Facebook users speak English. So we think that that's a good place to start, especially when this isn't rolled out widely. But we want to get this to everyone. We want to index um, all of the posts and all of the content on Facebook. And that's going to be another big job that is really exciting. And of course, eventually, we want to get to Open Graph, which is going to be a massive challenge. But it's going to be a lot of fun to take on. So we're looking forward to this. Um, and it's really an honor to be able to build this service for an offer to the world. So when are we going to start rolling out Graph Search? Um, we're we're going to start a limited beta of Graph Search today. And um, we're going to start rolling it out very slowly. And we're starting to roll it out now because we think we've We've um, made enough progress where we're excited to, to get this into people's hands, um, but also because we need to start getting data from how people use it in order to improve the product. So we're going to start rolling it out slowly, and we're going to incorporate data from how people use it in order to make the product better before we roll it out very widely. But we're looking forward to getting it into more people's hands over the coming weeks and months.